Today on Detroit Muscle, we start building an all-new giveaway car that you can take home. This time it's a nod to one of GM's most iconic models and its biggest anniversary ever. Twenty seventeen is a big year for GM because it marks the fiftieth anniversary of one of its most iconic cars, the Chevy Camaro. Right, and that gave us the idea to partner with Krager on this, our newest giveaway car. Our first introduction to the sixth gen was at a press conference at GM headquarters. Well, we started working on the sixth generation a few years ago now, and the one thing we all said as a team is, this thing has to resonate with our customer. In general, it's smaller and lighter than where we came from with the Gen 5 car. And some of the technologies are brand new that we haven't seen yet in Camaro, and that's a huge way to move the car forward. One of the ways they've improved the car is in brute force. The 2015 SS had 426 horsepower, while the 2016 bumped that number up to 455. The car that we drove from Detroit to Nashville was a V6, but it still had some pep to it. But the car we're building is an SS because we want our giveaway to be the best it can be, with improved power and handling over the other Camaro models. This thing is no joke right out of the box. The 2016 SS Camaro is the most powerful performance car in its tier. Big thanks to all that goes to that new LT1 engine. Right, that engine may be new, but there are a lot of carryover components on this car from the previous generation ZL1, like the suspension. Those ZL1s came with magnetic ride control, which is now an option on the SS models. Combined with that best-in-class power, you can drive off the lot with a pretty serious machine. Ours doesn't have magnetic ride, but that only means we have more room to improve it. We tossed it on the dyno down the hall in engine power to get a baseline power number. She laid down 419 to the wheels, right where she should be. So we've got a good platform to start with for our next giveaway car. And with some handling and power improvements, this little bow tie is going to be one mean machine. We also plan to do some paint and body mods. And if you want to drive away in our Krager Camaro, then enter to win it at KragerWheel.com. Then you can do a bigger burnout than this one. Now this Camaro straight out of the box ain't no joke, but you know we can't leave stuff alone. We have a few plans for this thing that's going to move it up a few notches, and I'm pretty excited. One of the best ways to quickly and efficiently turn our Camaro from stocker to rocker is going to be with forced induction, which we're going to do a little bit later. But with all that air being crammed in the front end and all that extra horsepower, we got to find a way to get it out of the back end, and we're going to do that with this stuff right here. These are Hooker's Blackheart headers for the 16 and up Camaro SS. They're 304 stainless with 3 8 inch flanges and they transition really nicely into the 1 and 7 8 inch primary tubes. These will bolt in the stock location without any other modifications necessary. Those headers are going to help free up the airflow in front of the cats, but we also want to free up some airflow behind the cats and we're going to do that with Hooker's Blackheart Axleback system. It's available in a couple of different configurations one with mufflers and one without, which is what we chose. It's 3 inch 304 stainless with 4 inch double wall polished stainless tips. Well now it's time for us to get our hands dirty and the first thing we're going to do is those headers. Let's get to work. We're going to start this upgrade by removing the entire exhaust system. Now we're going to be replacing this water heater size resonator back here in the back and to do that we're going to have to practically cut it off. Now that's no big deal, there's instructions to show you where to cut it. And we want to cut it now because this thing is in place. We don't want to have to wrestle this thing around in the floor, if you know what I mean. One of these tube cutters is a great way to get nice clean cuts, and it's also easy as pie. A little WD-40 on the hangers also helps to get them slipped off, and bye bye goes that big old muffler. Oops. 
Then we'll move up front and take the cats loose and get the rest of the exhaust out of the way. The next step is gonna to be to unbolt the factory headers from the heads, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff in the way, so we gotta get that out of the way to get down in there. But the good news is, all that stuff's gotta come out anyway before we put our boost on. You know how these late model cars are. Everything is crammed in here so tight, but it's gotta come out to make room to work. The spark plugs are gonna come out while we're at it. Otherwise, we'll be fighting to get around them as well. We can start unbolting the stock headers now, and thankfully they can be pulled out from the top. Then we'll take those black hard headers and slip them into place. Now it's back under the car so that we can get the rest of the exhaust put in. We'll get the stock portion bolted back in place at the cats. We're in the back of the car again here where we made our cuts earlier to cut our original axle back system off and we're getting ready to install our new one. First is this adapter pipe. And then we come in with our mid pipe. Slides into stock hanger. We'll tighten those clamps later. Now for the tailpipes. This is a snap to install, just a clamp and a hanger. How about that, boy? We got ourselves a straight pipe Camaro, son. Coming up, we'll show you how we're gonna force some air down the throat of that Camaro's V8. Hey guys, we're back and we've got the exhaust dialed in on our newest project, the Krager 2016 Camaro. Now earlier we had mentioned we're gonna be running some forced induction and the way we're gonna be doing that is with this Edelbrock E-Force Supercharger. Now this setup has been known to make 550 plus horses at the rear wheels, and it's 50 state legal. And since this car is gonna be given away, we don't know who's gonna win it, that's an added benefit. The kit includes everything you're gonna to need to install that supercharger, like the slower crank pulley so that you can drive the unit, a couple of pulleys, belt, bracket, some wiring, and a tuner so that you can reflash that ECU. The kit also includes a few hoses because we're going to have to move that fuel system around just a bit. And we'll be running a heat exchanger up front to cool down those air temps. And the kit includes everything to make that system work properly. Detroit Muscle presents Back to Basics. Tips for the beginner gearhead. Let's take a look at how forced induction systems work. First, you have your classic root style blower. Inside the case, there are meshing lobes that are driven by a belt connected to the crank pulley and they force air into the engine. Then you have turbochargers, which use the exhaust energy to drive a turbine, which is connected to an impeller that pushes air into the engine intake. Next is a centrifugal supercharger, which is different from a root style one in that it uses an impeller instead of lobes to push the air. Last is a modern style roots blower, which employs twisted lobes to do the work. This lobe design greatly reduces friction and heat buildup over the classic design and is the basis for the Edelbrock system we're using. Before we install any of that supercharger kit though, we went ahead and loaded the tune. The reason we did that is because we didn't want to install all those hard parts and forget to load the tune and hit the key. That could be bad. Yeah, so the first thing you would automatically think of is we'd start disassembling the engine. Well, it's kind of wrong. We gotta get this fascia off. With that removed, we can start pulling off the PCV hoses. Now this tube right here, you might call this a sound tube. What it does is it pipes engine noise into the car through the firewall. Now, we deleted the mufflers if you remember, so we're not gonna need this. Next, we'll move on to the engine cover, which simply unbolts. Then we'll start getting the intake removed. 
Now we aren't gonna be reusing this, but it's a great part to hold on to or even sell for some cash for other mods. I got it. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm getting in a hurry. One really nice thing about the Edelbrock superchargers is they come with a very detailed instruction manual. I always like to check off what we've done. That way you make sure you do everything you're supposed to. The next step is going to be to disconnect this fuel line. So we've got the correct tool here and we're going to use some Scott shop towels to make sure we don't make a big mess. Here's the reason we removed that line. It has to be replaced with this one from the kit because it's a hard line that will sit lower against the block to make room for that blower. We also had to make a relief cut in this dampener to make room. We're gonna get the fan out of the way, which will allow access to remove the crank pulley. With the bolt removed, we can put a puller on it and pop it off. Then we'll replace it with the one from the kit, which includes an extra channel to drive the supercharger. We'll be sure to torque it to spec. Now we can go ahead and put the accessory drive belts back on, then reinstall the fan. All right, guys, I just got the bracket mounted up that's going to hold our transfer pump. Now, this thing cycles the coolant around from the heat exchanger to the intercooler. And we're going to have to break for a minute so you guys don't run off. Stick around to see how much more power we're able to squeeze out of the Camaro. Hey guys, while you were gone, we went ahead and finished bolting up the brackets and pulleys that'll accept the belt to drive our supercharger, and we buttoned up our fuel lines and evaporative emissions hoses, but you probably didn't want to see that anyway. This is the good stuff here. Our supercharger is getting ready to go on pretty quick, and we're going to switch some stuff over from our original intake manifold onto it. One of those is the throttle body. I'm just going to unbolt it, bolt it right into this spot here, and then also these O-rings. Now these are actually the intake manifold gaskets. They're going to come out of here, Go right into this adapter plate. This is what's gonna bolt to the heads. This little nub has to be trimmed off on each one of those gaskets in order for them to fit onto our adapters. Don't forget the throttle body gasket, which we'll also steal from the factory intake. Four bolts and it's all it takes to get her cinched down. Then our adapters can be seated in place and tightened down lightly. These get torqued to a few inch pounds. No need to tighten them hard. Now for the cherry on top, that big old blower. With it torqued down, we can go ahead and run the drive belt for it and move on. We got a little bit more disassembly we need to do. We have to take out these cross braces, this hood latch assembly, and this front bumper to make way to slide in place that heat exchanger. These plastic brackets will need to be modified, so we'll pull them off real quick. Now that we've made room to mount our heat exchanger, we need to start thinking about where we're gonna route our hoses. Now we've got the nipples here on the heat exchanger that are gonna point toward the front of the car, so we're gonna have to drill some holes in these plastic shrouds. Watch that thing don't get away from you. Ah. A razor blade can clean up the hairy bits from punching that hole. Now we can start putting parts back on. Our 
coolant hose runs through the bracket we just punched out, then connects down here to the heat exchanger. We'll also go ahead and get our coolant reservoir installed and hooked up. The air box and filter can go back in place and then we can start getting our electronics hooked up. That includes a hot wire to the battery, as well as the plugs for sensors, injectors, and everything else. Of course, we're gonna install these snazzy covers. Then after that, we'll get our fascia plugged back onto the front of the car. The hood can now be reinstalled, and in case you haven't done it yet, don't forget, put in the new tune. Still ahead, we'll put up or shut up on the dyno. Welcome back, folks. So far on our 2016 Krager Camaro SS project, we got a baseline power number of 419 to the rear wheels. So then we installed our Edelbrock E Street blower and got her running. Now that we've got all of our parts bolted on to our 2016 Camaro SS, it's time to get it back on the dyno and see what kind of power it's gonna make. You know, if you remember at the beginning, we made 419 rear wheel horsepower stock, which is our baseline. And Edelbrock actually claims that with their blower and their tune, this thing will make 580 rear wheel horsepower. Now, that's a pretty steep number, but we're hopeful. First pull, 573, not bad. Well, that last pull wasn't too shabby. We made 573 horse. We're gonna go ahead and hit it again, just see if we can make a little bit more. That time she made 578 on just below nine pounds of boost. If we compare our before and after numbers, we've gained 159 horsepower. Well, that's it. Our Camaro made 578 rear wheel horsepower. Considering Edelbrock claims 580, we're within two horsepower. We're pretty happy with that. It's 159 horsepower gain over stock. So considering it's 50 state legal, that's really good. Now we've got some more stuff we need to do to this car, but we need to get it on off of the dyno, back down to our shop. If any of you folks have ever tried to do a transmission swap or upgrade on a 63 to 79 Corvette, then you already know the problems associated with it. And that is the factory transmission cross member. We've got one right here, and normally this is attached to the frame through these holes right here and some big old rivets. Now you can't really get this out without major modifications or risking damage to that frame. Well, the folks at American Powertrain have figured out a solution to this problem, and it comes in the form of this removable crossmember flange kit. What you do is you slice your stock crossmember here and weld in these flanges, bolt it right back into the car. This has been a huge issue for Corvette owners over the years, but not any longer, thanks to American Powertrain. A lot of you out there have some of those older rides, and Mother Nature, well, she's not much of a friend to them. And those interior components oftentimes don't handle those elements very well. If you've got a first-gen Camaro, Classic Industries now offers a dash pad. They're made to OEM specifications and design. This dash pad has an injection molded base with the proper foam cord that is wrapped in vinyl with the proper grain and stitching style. Now these are only available in black, but they can be painted to your desired color. We're all out of time for now, guys, so until next time, y'all keep it between the ditches.